<laughs> What's up and welcome to Kind of Funny's Mad Max in Review. That's right. We are ranking, reviewing, and recapping every Mad Max movie. And no, we're not just doing Fury Road leading into Furiosa. We're starting way back with the 1979 George Miller original Mad Max. Mad Max. And then next week, Nick, where are we going? The Road Warrior. The Road Warrior. Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. Joey. That's cool. Guess what the next one? Guess what number three is called? Fury Road. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Oh. Yeah, which is oh. one of my personal favorites. I didn't know there were that many. Uh, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> I there and were only then four. Fury Road. And then Furiosa. Uh-huh. But uh, we're doing the next three. Um, so it's this, number two, number three. And then, if memory serves, we're taking a little bit of a break to go yeah. back to um, Planet of the Apes, I think it, it was. Sounds about right. A couple of the in reviews that we have to do. And then we'll do Fu- uh, Fury Road the week before Furiosa. The, the saga of the prequel or whatever I'm the so hell it's excited. called. Um, I just love the names of these movies. Like, I can't believe Beyond Thunderdome is the actual name of a movie. Isn't that And rad? The Road Warrior. Well, that's what's crazy about The Road Warrior, and this will be a fun piece of trivia when you get there, is it was just marketed as The Road Warrior. Oh, because yeah. Mad Max too. Uh-huh. Yeah, because in the States, this was, I, I don't know that Mad Max was that big of a movie in the States because it's an Australian production. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when they got here, they were like, oh, no one knows who Mad Max is. Let's call it The Road Warrior. And now it's marketed as Mad Max to the Road Warrior because people know it. They know from Furious Road and Fury Road. And I think I think Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome was the official name of the third one because mm-hmm. the Road Warrior did, I think, well. I could be completely wrong about all this, but I do remember thinking like the Road Warrior, that's cool. And then someone's like, Oh, there was a movie before that. I was like, Is it the Road Warrior one? They're like, no, it's called Mad Max. I was like, sure, that makes cool. sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not? I don't even think they make reference to the fact that his name is Max in the Road Warrior, but it doesn't matter. Is he mad? That's all that really matters Bad, for this yeah. guy. Uh, a lot of stuff I want to talk about real quick before we even get into this. CinemaCon has been going on the Ooh. last couple of days. So things are just popping off left and right. They're all the on? studios have uh, come out and essentially done their E3 where they like announce a bunch of things and change ups in their lineup. Some good, some bad, some bad that are actually good. Things like Saw 11 getting delayed. All right. Obviously, Heartbreaker. But then the quote. It's going to be October the, without the, Saw. Yeah, it's Halloween. It must be Saw, everybody. Uh, the good news about this, though, is they delayed it, and well, Jigsaw himself put out a video yes. uh, explaining that it was going to be delayed. Do you game? Uh, you have like, to wait six it's months. It's taking more time to make my game. Is essentially yeah. what he said. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the stupid little bike. Uh, but the the producers uh, of the movie came forward, and they're like, "Hey, we don't want to get this wrong. Like Saw Ten brought this back. We don't want to just turn this into an annual like thing." And I'm like, yeah. "I love you." Thank you. Take your time. As much time as you need. Oh, sure. Just get yeah. it right. Get, get that Oscar caliber acting that we <laughs> no, got. No, just last make couple. a good Nick's saw. So just don't excited. make a bad saw. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, man. It's like, you know, take si- they could take six more years to make a saw, and it would be slightly better than the saw they could have made in three days. I don't know, man. There's a, uh, We've seen some real bad ones, and then we've seen some, yo, that was fun as hell. I'm looking for the fun. Sure. So we're going to have to wait one extra angle. year yeah. to get to that uh, that that new saw one. Saw on the moon. Um, some saw other space. fun things, though. Nick, I don't know if you saw this. Some of this will mean less to you than some of the other things. Um, but, well, first off, let me start with the most important thing to ever happen. We got some footage of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Uh, we got to see them facing off against Shadow the Hedgehog, and Jim Carrey is back as Dr. Robot- Robotnik, and this time they made him look the way he's supposed to. So oh. really excited about all of that. Maybe when we do Sonic in Review, I'll finally watch a Sonic Oh, movie. and we're doing Sonic in Review, baby. Now that there's a third movie and they're talking about a cinematic universe? Great. Oh, we have Knuckles coming out in like two short weeks on Paramount+. Plus. Wow. A whole show in, in the Sonic I movie was, universe. I was- for a long time there, I was like, oh, Knuckles is getting his own video game. No. Uh, no, dude. His own <laughs> show, dude. Whoa. His own freaking show. It's crazy. I'm With, excited. It's going to be wild. Uh, but the most important thing to me, two things. Yeah. Transformers. All right? What Not one, seen? two movies. All right? Okay. Oh, one no. of them this year. Oh, animated. No. It's an animated Perfect. movie. Love They're doing it. the animated Love route. Love it. It's like, it, uh, it sounds like its own thing. Chris Hemsworth voicing Optimus Prime. Huh. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, interesting but choice. The footage they showed, people are hyped on it. Sounds cool. No humans. It's just the robots on Cybertron. Humans, humans are the we children. Like we like that a lot. And then if of you're animation. like, hey, you know what? I do want some humans in my Transformers movies. Oh. They also announced Transformers Cross G.I. Joe. It's oh, officially it's actually happening. happening. They teased it at the end of Rise of the Beasts. They're actually making a Transformers what? G.I. Joe movie. A- Terrible idea. It's not a happen, we're man. Have so much fun, Nick. Oh, we're gonna have a dude. I love the G.I. Joe movies. Mm-hmm. They're terrible mm-hmm. and they're so stupid fun. I've never seen them. Really? So we might need to add those to Transformers we in review. 100 percent need to add those oh, to yeah. Transformers Are those in the, review. The Channing Tatum ones? Well, 
It's a little complicated. It's complicated. But yes, the Joey. answer is yes. Uh, my favorite thing to do in in the first GI Joe movie is play my favorite game ever called "Is That Sienna Miller." Because I can never <laughs> tell if it's Sienna Miller in a movie. I don't even know who that is. Exactly. Wow. But she's been in literally every movie you've ever she's seen. She's been in so many movies. She's on this season's uh, uh, this season's Curb Your Enthusiasm. And it's hilarious. She just pops up on stuff. You're like, why is she in this? Was she married to Jude Law for a while? I want to say yes. I think that's why. She's also in Layer Cake. You've seen her in a bunch of stuff, but you never. she just disappears. So, Joey. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's yeah. an American she sniper. She was like on the cover of some movie. I think I she plays... I forget who she plays in G.I. Joe, but it's the one of the bad guys. No, I, I don't know. Doesn't matter. I, I haven't seen it, but one there day we go. will see it. And the, Joey, you said, are those the ones with Channing Tatum? And I was like, eh, it's complicated. The reason it's complicated, and I'm going to get some of this wrong because I've never seen them, but I sure. just remember. So you're going to need to help me here. <laughs> and like Transformers it's, happened 2007. Yeah. yeah. They followed it up around the same time, the same production studio, whatever, with G.I. Joe yeah. that was with Channing Tatum. Yeah. Then they made a sequel to G.I. Joe and then, with Channing Tatum. But... but they shot so much of it, and then something happened, and then they reshot the movie and took out Channing Tatum. Well, they it, got the rock. He's only like in the first like minute or two. The right? Rock. That's what they it got was. The rock, they got the rock, and he plays Roblox, which is, I mean, he, this is right as the Rock was blowing up. I don't know what the, the issue with Channing Tatum was there because he had two. He had a one-two punch where he had that, and then he had the next Kingsman movie where he was supposed to be more prominently featured in, and that got screwed up somehow. So they pulled him out of that as well. He was supposed to be Gambit at one point. So yeah, much stuff. He had a lot of stuff going man. on. Um, and then but there was thank a, God he's still making the movies where he dances for ladies. Yeah. Is this also the one with Rihanna, or is that a different? No, it's Battleship. No, yeah. that which we should absolutely add in because <laughs> Battleship fucking rocks. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I spent a lot of time talking about all this stuff, but what I was building to Nick is the most exciting thing that was announced today that I don't, I don't know if you've heard yet. I'm not. My head's been buried. They all announced a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Animated. They haven't said if it's animated or if it's live can action it, yet. Can it just be a sequel to Mutant Mayhem? Well, yeah. they already announced that. Okay, good. That is happening too. What this is, Nick, yeah, is an adaptation of The Last Ronin. Oh, sick. Which is the story, without spoilers, I am familiar. where yes. three of the four turtles are dead in the far future. Not far future, the future. And the, the final turtle is trying to avenge their deaths. That's sick. And it is the coolest fucking story ever. That's rad. And it's going to be rated R. I love it. Well, I hope, it, I hope it's animated, hell. truth be told. That would be amazing. That would be rad. Imagine an animated rated R Turtles. We're in the we're in the That's heyday cool. of that right now, though, man. Because I mean, just coming off of Invincible, which is rated R, right, or at least rated mature. Uh, X Men ninety seven feels like it should be rated R. Actually, after this recent, because sometimes so. you see some stuff where you're like, "Is that a fetus? I don't know what's going on with that baby. Is it talking to me? <laughs> this shit's wild. Am I doing acid? Did someone slip LSD into my Starbucks coffee? I don't care. They're making. They're finally doing it, Joey. They're finally doing what we always talked about. They're making animated projects for 44-year-old white men. It's perfect. I love it. What was, wasn't that sausage party? <laughs> I didn't get into the sausage party. Really? Yeah, that was a Ricky Stenicky. You didn't, didn't have it for you? Didn't do it for you? No, didn't do it for me. This is Kind of Funniest in Review, where each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, watching us, listening to us, however you want to support us. But if you want to go above and beyond in your support, the Kind of Funny membership is the best way to do that. You can get the show ad-free. You can watch live as we record it, and you get a daily exclusive show. You can also be a super dope Patreon producer like James Hastings, Casey Andrew, Kieran Hopesapian, Carl Jacobs, Kashan Patel, Karen Lindner, and Nathan Lamoth. I didn't introduce us. I'm Tim Geddes. This is Joey Noel. Hi. Th oh. <laughs> that is the producer slash producer Nick Scarpino. Hey. And not doing? joining us right now, but joining us for the rest of these, Andy Cortez, our little boy, not feeling so good. He's got the sniffles. He's got the sniffs. So uh, he's at home, but <laughs> he will be joining us. He was very bummed to not be here. We do not like people missing in review, period. I, what's but, bummer is I really want to know what Andy thought I, of I, this movie. I do have his thoughts. I will uh, read okay, his good. thoughts so he was able after to watch we say it. ours. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But uh, I wish he was here for this, but he will join us in the future. Um, so without further ado... We're brought to you by Factor, Robin Hood, and Dragon's Dogma 2, but I'll get to that later. Let's get into it. Mad Max, released Mad on Max. April 12th. Whoa. Tomorrow. I'm going to say that's soon. What? what? Uh, For people who are watching tomorrow, it's today. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, you're right. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> when this is releasing on tomorrow. April 12th. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, Joey. Uh, what but do you have to say about Whoa! <laughs> in Syria. April 12th, 1979, with a runtime of an hour and 33 minutes. Lean. You love to see it. 
I, all three of the original movies are about an hour and a half. We love this. Which is awesome. I also didn't feel that way. <laughs> like, no. And that's, you know, older movies. It is what sure. it is. Um, but we'll get more into that. Uh, directed by George Miller. Renowned George Miller. Like, Nick, do you have any, like, George Miller takes? Uh, no, I just, I grew up watching these movies in the 80s because they were always on TV. Specifically, The Road Warrior was always on TV. And then, uh, so growing up watching them being like, what? psychopath imagine this reality it used to terrify me because i was like oh that's definitely gonna be the future and you guys don't know what i'm talking about yet because you haven't seen road warrior but man there's just like these these movies are hyper violent but the the hallmark for the george miller movies and the reason why everyone loves george miller movies specifically uh uh mad max not the witches of eastwick which is a whole other story uh which Remember he did when directed. You made us watch that over COVID. yeah man <laughs> That I didn't realize that one. was George Miller. Yeah, he had a horrible time directing that movie. He tried to leave it four times. It's a, it's one of those like <laughs> storied movies that, that uh, I'm pretty sure it's George Miller. Um, yep, it is. Uh, uh, but no, he is very much known for Mad Max. He's known for the hallmark of a series being these amazing practical stunts with all this. I mean, it's all about the car chase. It's all about the crazy post-apocalyptic sort of like metal hot rod wild vision of whatever's coming out of his brain. And uh, I don't really think there are too many other directors that have even come close to that style. And I don't think he's directed that many movies, actually. So he hasn't directed that many. Uh, you know what? Maybe like 13 or so. Um, but well, he's... Uh, three of them are Mad Max movies. Um, well, more that, right? Or four. Like four, yeah, with yeah, uh, and five. And now with Furiosa. Furiosa. So, um, yeah, five of the Mad Max movies. Um, also, The Witches of Eastwick. Um, but the most important things that I don't think we talk about enough is he did not direct, but he wrote and produced Babe in 1995. That's right. Um, yeah. Which That's is very awesome. important because that movie is fantastic, and I watched it about a I year ago, and it is every time still as good as what I remember Pig it. Pig in the City? Um, he directed Babe, Pig in the City. Oh. Can you believe it, Joey? We should do George Miller in review. You know, right. Just did, throw him in. Did one of those win an Oscar? Um, James Cromwell won an Oscar for Babe. If memory serves correctly, yeah. I think he won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Well, Incredible. let me let me do you one better. It could be robbed, wrong, though. You know, well, you know, pig? life isn't fair. We should have given the everybody pig. goes. That'll do, pig. That'll do, and mm -hmm. I start crying immediately because this is a sweet relationship. Babe just wanted to come come through for the old man. He just wanted, he just to, wanted to come. He wanted just wanted to, to come help through. herd the sheep. You know, all he wanted to do, man. I do like the duck goose yelling like Christmas is carnage. Of course, iconic. Of course, you know what else is iconic? What mm. Happy Feet. Another movie that he directed <laughs> and won an Academy Award for for, for best, best animated, animated feature. feature. Good for George Miller. This yeah. Is so fun. What wildly different like swings on Hell in his yeah, career. Dude. Good for him, man. Get it. Good for him. Get it. Uh, music was done by Brian May, an Australian film composer and conductor who was a prominent figure dur during the Australian New Wave. Sick. Sick. Like music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Uh, the budget. This is where things get a little interesting, y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. George Miller raised the money for Mad Max by working as an emergency room doctor. Just yeah, casual. Sure. You know what I mean? Things were different back He's then. Well, would, you guys, you be, would you guys be surprised to know that I time. used to be a doctor also? Yeah. Doctor of keeping it real. <laughs> That's one of the worst things I've God, ever heard God, I wish Andy say. was here so bad for that. Can I call him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah please do. <laughs> please, please let him know what you just said. I can't play the how much of was the budget for this movie because I did Let's see do some answers. light Googling last night as I was watching this because it was we'll get to there. <laughs> this, what an interesting movie this is. He's not going to answer. He's probably sick. Hello. Andy Cortez, this is Nick Scarpino. You're on uh, in review for Mad Max. Can I run a joke by you real quick? Are you feeling okay? Yeah, let me hear it, man. Okay, so George Miller, it turns out, raised the budget for Mad Max by working extra hours in an emergency room because he used to be a doctor. And I said, hey, guys, did you guys know that I used to be a doctor? A doctor of keeping it real? Nice, dude. Nice. Thanks, bro. Thank you. <laughs> I miss you, bro. Oh, yeah. Get better. Get oh, better God, soon. He's really sick, huh? Thanks, man. <laughs> All right, buddy. Feel, feel better. Get some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> my dude, man. My dude. <laughs> Great job, Kev. Uh, uh. But yeah, so it, it grossed. Um, well, sorry. So the budget was very, very small. It's in Australian dollars, so I don't fully understand like what this means. I can but do they're, a conversion. They're saying for you real quick. Uh, five million, five million Australian dollars essentially to make yeah, this movie. Oh. I mean, we can call right a lot here. and see, but nineteen seventy nine. That's about half. Um, that's point six five United States dollars. So okay, let's okay. See, that's right now. I don't know what the exchange rate would have been. <laughs> 
What what matters is nineteen seventy nine Australian dollar exchange rate. Right? Yeah, I mean, you got to give it, 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 it three three point two million. It, it That's made, a lot of money actually for an indie. It I made a hundred million dollars. Lower than that. I, I mean, I thought it was like four hundred thousand dollars that they made this movie. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But what I do know is a hundred million dollars made, making it the highest profiting movie ever until the Blair Witch Project came out and dethroned them. That's oh, rad. Like for how much it costs? Yeah. Oh. They yeah made, see, I, this movie made the most money, which is crazy to think this, about. This was what, 78? 79. 79. So yeah, well, a year before I was born, sadly. I don't remember how well this did in the States, but it must have done it well didn't, if it did. It, it became more of a cult classic, but it was Australia that really kind of- Oh, like, so he did 100 mil in Australia. I mean- Or in Europe or whatever. Worldwide, but like- you would imagine the majority of the majority. That came That's from awesome. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I remember. I just remember Mad Max, like not having watched Mad Max proper until like the '90s, being like, "Oh, I can go rent that." So we'll get into our thoughts, and I, of course, that's why we we do this on the show. Is here we talk about thoughts, but I do want to start with a little bit more trivia um, to lead into that. Um, thank you. Okay, three hundred fifty thousand U.S. dollars is okay. what they're talking God, about here. Cool there. Um, this movie ends with a predicament. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That I did not expect. In no, movie. not at all. Where does it remind you of another film? Yes, where where the our titular hero, <laughs> Mad Max, handcuffs, ankle cuffs, uh, yes. ankle cuffs. You're right, um, John Johnny Boy, Johnny Boy, to a situation that he is going to explode in. Yeah, and he throws a saw at him and says something to the extent of, "You can saw through the handcuffs, or you can saw through your ankle." One's going to be easier or whatever. And I was sitting there like, whoa. Yeah. Damn, man. This movie's straight up jacking from Saw. It really did. Jigsaw, dude. Well, you got sued. You they know? sued him retroactively. The retroactively. It was a whole fucking thing. But then I was just like, wait a minute. This is like, this is weird. I and mean, then Kevin's like, Tim, it, it, this was the inspiration for Saw. What? And I was like, I don't know that I believe it, but I Googled it. And guess what? Guess what? Was it really? James Wan, the director of Saw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, Lee, Wannell. Uh, Lee Wannell, who was Adam in Saw, in the bathroom, you know, who yeah. was also like uh, the, the writer of the movie. Mm-hmm. Both of them, Australian. No Both shit. Both of them, so they were just huge, huge fans Mad Max films. of <laughs> independent <laughs> Australian films. And they straight up were like, yeah, that's the crux of this movie. That's so cool. I love it. I love it. I love, I love it. it. So damn freaking cool. Um, but anyway, enough <laughs> about that. I want to start with Nick for a little historical sure. uh, framing here. What do you think of this movie? <laughs> um, I love. Can we always refer to Nick's perspective as historical framing? <laughs> I like the doctor narrative more myself personally, but that's fine. I, I you know, I, I really enjoy this movie. It's obviously a movie that was made in 1979, and so it's rough around the edges. Um, but what I like about it is that very simply. And very unabashedly, uh, George Miller creates a a world with within this, and it's not a fun world. It's not a pretty world, but it's a stylized world that just kind of works. Like all the cars, the bikers, the way they interact, the fact that you you know his his sort of vision for it was a future that's sort of on the fringe of, of breaking down, where law and order are sort of chaos, and you've got that blurred line. <laughs> Where, you know, we have that conversation he's talking to his, his captain where he's like, I got to quit because I'm worried that I'm just going to become one of them, right? Uh, you see the Hall of Justice in, in disrepair. You see Anarchy Road. You see all these signs that you don't necessarily pick up on, but you're like, this is not a safe world that we live in anymore. And that was his vibe, and I think he nails it. And then that, in addition to all of the fun stunts, kind of keep this movie moving along in a, in a cool way. And it's not stuff that you necessarily see or had seen back then. Um you know, you think of movies that have great car chases, things like Bullet, uh, you know, of the era, and they're not, you're not seeing guys with their eyeballs popping out, smashing into semi trucks, right? So that hyper violence um, and that, 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 that sort of vibe that George Miller was able to get across in this movie, I think is very unique, and I think it deserved what it got. Uh, it's not a movie that I go back to as my touchstone for Mad Max. When I think of Mad Max, I think of The Road Warrior, because that to me is the iconic movie that I think did way better in the States. That's when I grew up on, that's one where I see. You see Max a little bit later in the iconic costume with the Interceptor and all that stuff. Um, But I think it's such a cool treat going back and watching this. And then as a a person who aspired to be an independent filmmaker, you look at this and you go, what an incredible achievement to have gotten this sort of self-contained hour and a half long crazy experience out of these actors, out of this budget. is very cool. So kudos to them. 
Joey Noel. Is this your first time watching Mad Max? This is my first time ever seeing a Mad Max movie. The only thing like I know about Mad Max is like trailers and stuff like that from Fury Road and Furiosa now at this point. Um, it's so interesting because I feel like I watch like a fair amount of 70s movies. Um, but I, as I was watching this, especially at the beginning, I was realizing like, I don't think I've ever really seen, nor uh, this is more of a question for Nick. Did like 70s action movies really exist? Yeah, not really. I mean, yes, they did. Um, you had movies, but Star Wars. Well, the Star Wars w- yeah. was sort of the the kickoff. Like Star Wars and the Spielberg era were the kickoff for a lot of like the big blockbuster action movies that we think of. Mm-hmm. So you're talking like the if you look at the popular like, movies of the '70s, you're looking at The Godfather. You're looking at yeah. like those types of even films. like Dirty Harry is like actiony, but like that's probably the cl- that's probably a very close analog to Warriors? this, right? That's '70s. Warriors would have been se- uh, either late '70s or early '80s. Yeah. I think would have been Warriors. Yeah, but. But um, you're not, I don't know that you're getting stuff like this. Maybe you had some racing movies, things like Paul Newman yeah. racing movies, stuff like that. But yeah, I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't speak to that. Yeah. I just thought it was interesting because I feel like, like this, it was funny to watch this and then know where action movies go in the 80s. And it's such a wild yeah. departure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> in the chat right now, uh, uh, Langley is talking about Bullet again. I just bring yeah. that up. Yeah, Bullet, Bullet was probably the, the action film of the 70s when you think about it. The French Connection was another yeah. action film in the 70s. And by action, I mean like, if you go back and watch the car chase and bullet, which is the most iconic thing, which actually is in San Francisco going down like Guadalupe uh, Parkway, um, if memory serves correctly, which I think it is, uh, it's boring as shit because yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you know, the car just driving. two cars kind of going yeah. fast and screeching tires. Just you contrast that to normal this Tuesday. <laughs> where it's like, yeah. all right, dude, um, look, I'm paying you a day rate of $50 and I'm going to serve you lunch. We're gonna need you to fly off this motorcycle at 100 miles an hour yeah. and like do it twice, three, two, three times. So this is like it's a little crazy to watch this movie and look back at the crazy stunts they did. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I just thought that, that was so interesting. Of like, oh wow, there's like a even though this is the end of the 70s, the jump that action movies make takes in the 80s is like significant. Um. But yeah, this is an interesting movie. I've because I've only ever seen the Fury Road kind of commercials and promo and stuff like that. This is such like a very simple beginning of everything. It kind of reminds me of Halloween where it's like, oh, it what it has become is very different than where it started. Yeah. Um had to Google, is Mel Gibson Australian? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like I had no idea. I yeah. That Isn't that, did you not know that? No. no. That was always the joke in the eighties because there's multiple moments specifically like if you watch Leave the Weapon where he doesn't quite get rid of his Australian accent. My favorite line out of Lethal Weapon is where where the little kid points to a tattoo on his arm. And he's like, hey, the bad guy had that tattoo. And he pulls Danny Glover aside. He goes, Roger, that's a special forces tattoo. And it's just thick as thieves in there. <laughs> the rest of the movie, he's pretty much nailing a Southern California accent. Yeah. But yeah, he's that Australian. such a dick thing to know. <laughs> well, I mean, it was just, you know, it was just he had that accent. It was it was known. And when he'd do interviews and stuff, he had the accent. He would do it. And so that was when you were a kid, you're like, what the fuck? Why yeah. does he not sound the same as he sounded in the movie that I love him from? So um, I think the other movie that was big for him was like Mutiny on the Bounty and a couple other movies. But I think this is the one that sort of put him on the map as far as an American star. I'm not sure what broke mm. him in the States. That must have been the Road Warrior, I'm guessing. I'll look, up his, I'll look that up. Um, but yeah, this was just such an interesting watch of a movie because it was so pared down from what I had known about it. Um, it. For it being 90 minutes, boy, does it feel way longer than that. And I think that is just like the slower pacing of storytelling sure. of movies in that era. Um, and it feels like the it's really, really light on dialogue in general, uh, which I guess makes sense for an action movie. But because may, maybe it's just that era of it, it doesn't feel like there's like a ton of other things filling in that sound. So it feels a little bit more hollow than I think I'm used to in watching action movies. Um, but I had fun. This was one that I like had to read the Wikipedia as I was watching of like, what exactly is going on? Cause it kind of just throws you in and doesn't really do a lot of explaining. Um, but I'm excited to see where it keeps going. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to read Andy's thoughts uh, okay. before I give my own. And he says, uh, really glad it had subtitles mm-hmm. or that I had subtitles on. Um, and I agree with that as well. Cause, um, I mean, I agree about the, with that for every movie, just cause I like actually seeing what they're saying. They're saying some gibberish in this and some of the names that they have for each yeah. other but i love i love it yeah. but yes i'm very happy that was a note that i had where it's like i can't tell if this is australian if this is in world if like what is <laughs> oh, is this apocalyptic whatever that, this yeah. is coming from i think a lot of it is the parlances of the time of australia yeah. but the, it took me forever to figure out what the hell they were referring to when they talked about the bronze 
they're like the bronze is this the bronze is this and then finally mad max is like i wear a bronze badge and i'm like yeah it's they're calling them the, like coppers yeah but it's not copper it's bronze oh, I didn't make makes sense yeah. yeah there's a lot i didn't if i'm being honest i didn't even realize the australian stuff until i was reading the facts i just thought that's just the way they talked at this yeah. in this apocalyptic world it reminds me a lot of reading the um of dark the dark knight uh returns mm, yeah, yeah, um, yeah yeah where they have that kind of weird cadence the the, well, the spud, I, the spud yeah. and all that stuff and I, I i was like okay that's just what this is um but again happy to have something else but going back to andy not at all what i expected i thought they were way further into the future apocalypse was that baby actually there in the street during that stunt with the cars <laughs> <laughs> rules and regulations were different back then yeah, huh man. <laughs> Very cool early practical visual effects. Were the bulging eyeballs real? Animatronic? Movies used to just end, huh? <laughs> An odd <laughs> mixture of slice of life with violent action. I don't think I liked this movie, but I don't think I hated it. You know what, Tim? I appreciate it. Yeah. There you go. This I, feels like a core movie that you would see in like a film studies class to like definitely understand where things have gone. I think to your point earlier, too, like the idea of the dialogue behind this movie, I know, I think really does serve to sort of set up the where we're at like uh, culturally and future wise like where civilization is but let's be honest George Miller just want to make a car chase and, and like a car crash movie and he and, and in that I think he supremely succeeded and that's where I kind of enter this I loved this movie oh, I yes, loved bro, this yes, movie man like, and, and it really to me it's like yeah it is just a bunch of chases and it's like chases in every single form possible like one on one one versus many on foot on foot versus car like they did so much of that and like yeah it's 1979 and yeah it's cheap as hell but they did so much more than they needed to. Like they created this whole world and weird stuff happening and like dope looking cars and crazy costumes and weird names and like all this shit that I was like, wow, y'all went way harder than I than necessary. But also that's what made this stand out and makes it feel like yeah, it's a, a vision. thing. There's a vision, there's a yeah. style. And like I, a lot of it didn't sit right with me. Like there's, there's definitely some things I think they went a little too far, but I also get that's, the story that they're telling here um i i'm confused as hell like i do not understand everything that's going on um but i yeah for the most part i get it similar to andy and joey i was shocked at where we were timeline wise i still am kind of confused about how things are gonna go haven't seen the future movies yet so we'll see but um i loved seeing like oh wow this there civilization civilization's not what it is to us but there is some left. There are houses still. Yeah. Like that's very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And um, seeing the kind of a setup, system of a, some yeah, sort. the Hall of Justice. There's like <laughs> what I really appreciated is this movie threw me into the deep end. But there was enough things that I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like seeing the Hall of Justice, you can fill in a backstory even though they don't tell you it. And I think there's a lot of really wise calls there to kind of set up that world. Um, certain parts of the movie feel like they're from a different movie. Like any of the Mel Gibson family stuff was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, it's so weird, but, um, it builds to a good place. And, um, I was just very surprised at how many times I sat there being like, this is awesome for a movie that I don't think a Tim Getty should traditionally like, uh, but it had a lot of get high moments. And Pretty like, good. I, I love the leather pants. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he's rocking those things. <laughs> can, can we talk about the poster by the way, for this movie? I, I is, haven't seen it. Right oh, there. I mean, how dude, insane is this poster? It's, that's freaking, so cool. freaking awesome. He's in like a, he has by the way, this is what, this is at a time when like, you could tell there was no internet because if they put this poster out now, they'd be like, "He never wore that." Fans would be like, yeah. "He never wore that helmet." Yeah. yeah, what the heck are you talking about? But, but it's like, still fucking cool. It's still super cool. But yeah, I think that I think that the power of this movie, that what I love about it, is the low keyness of where we're at in time. Where the first image we see, one of the first images we see as we get into the plot, is like the hall of or the the what is the hall of justice sign, which is like falling apart. And then you get these subtle hints. Well, not so subtle hints. They kind of beat you over the head with it. Of like. They don't have that many. There's no people left that want to be cops, right? There's the guy, uh, Rupert Charlie, whatever, that gets his throat slit and then has to talk with one of those machines. Yeah. Like in a normal police force, he would probably go on disability for the rest of his life and like be compensated for that and have to do therapy and all that. They put his ass right back to work the next day because they got no one left. And there's just, this is society basically his last breath as yeah. it's about to collapse around them. There's no law. He is all that's left. And then by the end of the movie, obviously, he just is has progressed to that now he's just on the road that's yeah it. man it's, it's left there's a lot of cool shit and i mean the car for the car off, is so sick interceptor like everything about interceptor. that is sick but the fact that they have this like 
not underground, but like this garage where they're like tricking it out mm -hmm. and it's like a kind of a secret. I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> well, like this is like such like, oh, of course Tim's gonna love that stuff. But like they build to it well. And the and the the, the, the dialogue between like the the sort of superintendent or whatever it is who was like, we're not doing this again because they basically built the car for Max because he's their PR guy. He's the only person anyone talks about. And then the fact of the matter, the, the, the low key like connection that potentially the bikers kind of know who he is from that yeah. story and like go out hunting him because of that. I love that. It's That's kind of crazy. Very, right? very cool. The whole thing about him, you said it earlier, but like, uh, I don't want to get pushed too far or whatever. I'm like, this is dope <laughs> as hell, man. And then at the end of the movie, he gets pushed too far, Joe. Yeah. He gets pushed way too far. Um, the thing I want to bring up about the Interceptor, the car, is I grew up, as you all know, um, loving the Super Mario Brothers movie. Me and Kevin watched it yeah, many, many times sure. from 1993. And we watched it on review. We talked about it. And sure, the movie is what it is. We, we all get it. We understand. But perfect. one thing I've always appreciated film. about that movie that I did, I to this day, think is really cool is the production design and the weird dystopian like future that the Mushroom Kingdom is in. And I remember reading a fact back then that the, which doesn't make sense for Mario, <laughs> but you know what, Joey? They <laughs> did <does>. it, okay? <laughs> I'm like, I'm... Looking to see where this string goes. Why was the main character of the Mario movie John Leguizamo's Luigi? I don't fucking know. Because uh, Bob Hoskins wasn't getting it done. <laughs> That's why. But uh, I remember reading uh, a fact um, when we did in review that the a lot of the reasons that the um, movie looked that way and had such a weird dystopian thing is they used... Um, props from other movies mm. and they use the cars from Mad Max. No way. And That's so like, cool. like all the cop cars, like they're all freaking weird as hell. Um, and it's like, Oh, that makes sense. And so watching this movie, I was like trying to like see it. And I'm going to be honest. I didn't instantly be like, That's the Mario car. Um, um but it doesn't, well, minor feature spoiler. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look the way here. That okay. Later okay, cool. So maybe, maybe it was from the future yeah. one then. Um, but either way, I'm looking forward to that and you should too. Uh, and also, you should look forward to Nick recapping the plot of this movie after a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Factor. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. A ton of us here at Kind of Funny have been so thankful for Factor since we've been in the new studio, and you can too. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals. Get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. Head to factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 and use code kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code kindoffunny50 at factormeals.com slash kindoffunny50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. This episode is brought to you by Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is the highly anticipated action RPG successor to the cult classic Dragon's Dogma, released in 2012. Dragon's Dogma 2 boasts a richly detailed and deeply explorable fantasy world created using immersive physics, character AI, and the latest in graphics from Capcom's RE Engine. This single-player action RPG challenges players to use their creativity and curiosity to shape their own experience. The world of Dragon's Dogma 2 revolves around choice. Both your party of pawns and enemies alike will react dynamically to your actions on the battlefield, whether you cling to the backs of monsters or seek to dispatch them from afar. Whether you like melee combat, shooting bows and spells, scaling enormous monsters, or using your environment to your advantage, Dragon's Dogma 2 has some for you and the character creator is easy to use with a ton of customizability to get as creative as you want so go to dragonsdogma.com to buy the game and start your epic quest today this episode's brought to you by robin hood did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement you can still have an ira robin hood has the only ira that gives you a three percent boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to robin hood gold but get this now through april 30th robin hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a three percent match that's right no cap on the three percent match robin hood gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their ira with a three percent match this offer is good through april 
30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs at 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. We don't have Andy, so. Yeah, we don't have a plot song. Plot. There it is. There it is, everybody. <laughs> simple movie. Simple movie, simple Indie plot. Indie movie. We don't have the budget for plot, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I'll tell you what. You want, you want to start this movie off right and set the expectation? You have the most epic metal Mad Max logo crash into the screen you've ever seen in your entire life. I mean, from this moment, I was like, oh. We're getting okay. something. We're getting something with this. Uh, we see a bunch of stuff. Obviously, like we're kind of setting up where this world is. We see skull and bones on the on the uh, the road. We see the Hall of Justice, which is falling apart. It's in disrepair. We see a little sign that says Anarchy Road, and then we catch up uh, to the super title of a screen that says uh, "A Few Years from Now," which is an ominous super I love title. Love that. Uh, Roop and Charlie, who are the two cops that are gonna uh, be there, they get a call that there's a cop killer. In route, they got to go chase that guy down. Uh, Roop, of course, is spying on two hippies as they're banging. Uh, Max, a we, lot more bare asses in this movie than I a was lot expecting. more, yeah. And man, yeah. some of it's real fucked up. Well, but, yeah, one specifically is real one fucked up. We'll get there. Yeah. Uh, we get these shots, of course, then of our hero right as he's sort of working on the distributor cap of his uh, car. He's washing his hands. We're seeing just little. I love how they're introducing Mel Gibson's Mad Max in here. We know he's the hero of this film because we're seeing him sort of like, you know shadowed or silhouetted or through the cracks or whatever what a build man what a build. only the 70s could pull something off like this and it you honestly made me laugh because the clo- the most recent thing i have a touchstone who touchstone who treats a main character like this is the johnny depp willy wonka before we oh yeah <laughs> and so that was just stuck in my head the Great. whole time <laughs> we all know how that turned out uh of course ruben and charlie are trying to catch up to a bandit known only as the knight rider now why the knight rider is so popular in a band of bikers is beyond me. Because the Knight Rider obviously likes cars. And if you know anything about bikers, they don't really have a bunch of people in cars that hang out with them, right? It's usually a that's biker gang or a car funny. gang. It's very, very funny. But this guy's like, I'm the I'm the mad midnight bomber. What bombs at midnight, baby? He's on the radio talking shit, crying, having a range of emotions. With what all this is stuff. happening here, it's man? This shit wild. was crazy. Like, this dude was going off like the snozberries taste like snozberries, man. Like, <laughs> I do not know what he was on, but that was crazy and he's doing acdc lines like just like just everything well, i'm a rocket i'm a roller I'm a <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? i'm a midnight stroller joker uh <laughs> we, we get introduced to goose here who is another character main character uh i forget his first name but it's i love goose. all the names that they have in this the naming convention in this is bonkers and to be fair i support it because the majority of them are italian i'm not sure why you got zanetti <laughs> you got cardellini mm. you got Bubby, all these things i'm like who named these people? And then the main bad guy's name is Toe Cutter. The, the <laughs> Toe Cutter, which I'm missing one of the freaking, uh, one of his eyebrows, which I, the whole time I'm looking at him and I'm like, that. you look fucked up, but I don't understand why it is. And I was like, oh, you only have one eyebrow. Yeah. Like, it's is so off-putting. It yeah. Um, but yeah, Toe Cutter, very interesting name. Like, it's cool, whatever. But it's also like, for the main bad guy, Toe, like, toe Cutter, when we're going to start this movie with this weird druggy guy being the Night the Rider. Night Rider. God damn, that's cool. Also, you can definitely tell. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah. I never yeah. picked that up. Did you we can, actually see him cutting off any toes? No. No. Okay. Maybe I'm sure. assuming toe cutter is maybe a reference to a mechanical thing. Or, or like an motors. Australian parlance. Oh, like interesting. Yeah, we can look it up. Maybe someone in the chat who's Australian can let us know. Uh, let us know, uh, Alex uh, 3B. Alex G 3B. Um, <laughs> he's Australian. Uh, uh, love... Everything about this, love the names. Uh, uh, of course, we're seeing we see Goose. We get introduced to him. He's a, he's a motorcycle cop, which is cool. He's eating lunch. He gets in on there. Love that immediately as they see him pull out two tow trucks, pull out after him, which is hilarious. I got some facts for you. Give me the facts of the, uh, of the future. Tow cutter, in the slaughterhouse sense, is a perfect name for an enemy of the police because a tow cutter is a specialized tool specifically designed to cut off the feet of pigs. Pigs. Whoa. Dang. That okay. is deep. See, we're world building here, everyone. Um, man, two tow trucks fill it. And then this just the shot where I'm like, this is how this movie's gonna go, man. Not one, but like there's like babies all over the road. 
in this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, who is letting these kids out in Australia? Are they just running it's rapid like Ruse? The apocalypse. Ruse? It is the apocalypse. A baby in the first act, man. When we see this kid running, I was like, the way that this camera is cutting around and this movie is edited, this kid's about to get splashed. We're going to see his body parts everywhere. everywhere. And I was shocked that it didn't happen. Absolutely but then not. the end of this movie happens, and I was like, oh, they were, build- oh. They were saving it for that. Kevin brought up the Mad Max wiki. Toe Cutters is slang for criminals that preys on other criminals, which makes sense because he's sort of pushing Johnny Boy uh, the entire time to become insane. Uh, th- right, This is where uh, the other two cops eat it. Uh, one of the guys gets it through the throat, and you're like, oh, he's done. No, he's not done. And they put his ass right back to work the next day because we don't have too many cops left. Uh, Knight Rider taunts them all. He says, I'm the Knight Rider. I'm a fuel-injected suicide machine. Oh my God. And this is where Max pops into action when he realizes the other two. It's much like Maverick, right, where he's like, I'll let them do the thing. And then they're like, you got to get it. I was like, launch yeah, Maverick. We're Let's go. Calling the big guns. Calling the big guns. Puts the glasses on. Tears off after the night rider as he turns the volume up on the radio of his interceptor. Uh, and then they face off. Mad Max takes him on head on. The night rider starts crying for no reason because I think he realizes maybe he's met his match or maybe he's his meds just finally kicked in and he's realizing that his actions. Who knows? Uh, but I could not believe the night rider wasn't Bam Margera. I literally have that written down in my notes. Wild. It was like, that's Bam Margera. I also want to point out that's Bam Margera. A hundred percent. He looks like Bam Margera and Bam Margera's dad <clears throat> mixed well, together a little I think bit. He just looks like Bam Margera now. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, uh, I do want to point out though that like obviously budget was very low on this. It would do, we do realize that very few of the scenes or any of the chase scenes, if any, are filmed at night. It is odd to have a chase scene with a band a bandit called the Night Rider that isn't broad daylight. <laughs> Yeah. You can tell they probably wanted <laughs> Jesus Christ. See? Was Bam Margera? Does he have a time machine? Someone That's check what that I'm out. saying, dude. That's wild. Wow. Uh, of course, they're going too fast to notice the overturned truck in the road. Max, Max spots it first and, and comes to a dead stop, screeching dead stop. But the Knight Rider and his girl bang head into it, and their fucking eyeballs pop out of their skull as they explode. Insane. Point that I want to uh, just point out here. If you go back and watch how this movie's cut. Yeah. A lot of the old movies of the 70s. Right, 80s really became the time where cuts started going down, like for action sequences specifically. And now, of course, the I, I think the concept for if you want a if you want a successful action sequence in modern day 2024, the cut mm-hmm. has to be cut every like millisecond or whatever yeah, it is. Exactly. Right, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> this movie had a lot of cuts, and when he when he directs the action, you get fast paced cuts that really help push that inertia totally. and feeling around. It, it's cool. funny because it's like the car doesn't look like it's going that fast, mm-hmm. but then the way that it's cut makes it does add to all the speed. It also makes it very disorienting of like this whole scene specifically, like where we start cutting, we see the kid in the street and we see like that I'm the night rider and then the, the other cops and then the him the throat slit. All of this is just like so many camera angles that like it it was a little tough to keep up with like sure. what actually was happening to the point that um I think it was here, it was like where we first see them kind of cross, we see the sign that's like don't go here, yeah. or whatever. And like go and things just start exploding. I thought that there was gonna be more of like a oh, there's no-go zones. Like, you just, you don't cross into that. Mm -hmm. And it kind of seems like they're more just, like, small, unsafe areas. So I thought that was, like, a weird, uh, I didn't, I don't think they did a great job of establishing the actual, like, placement of things in the world from Mm -hmm. this opening bit. It left me a little confused until later in the movie where I was like, okay, I see what's going on. Uh, Of course, after the Knight Rider smashes into the semi-truck, we get what I would say is probably the iconic shot of the movie, and it's the one wherever, whenever they show Mad Max, it is we see Mel Gibson's character, for Mel Gibson, for the first time as he's walking out and then takes the glasses off with his coat open a little bit, and the camera kind of dollies in on him, and that's Mad Max. We see him. And I got to tell you, the one thing I'm really kind of split on in this movie, I don't know if I love it or hate it, is Mel Gibson's quasi mullet in this film. Mm. Like it wants to be a mullet, <laughs> but it's not. And it wants to be kind of punk rock, it's but it's not. And I kind of love it. Like I low key kind of love it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, dude. Definitely real Andy. God, <laughs> wild though. Those are big old lies. Um, I do, do love think- the guy getting his throat slit <clears throat> and then them like, like doing the thing where like I, I like the augmentation. Like I feel yeah. like like we're we're dealing with a, a world where it's like yo humans are fucked, things are bad, but yeah. like we're willing to like turn ourselves into robots if necessary type things. Like hints at that that yeah. I from what I know Fury Road and stuff we're gonna get a lot but more. But then of. they also don't they just wasn't that just a thing that they did with people? Like. I'm thinking of like all of those like crazy smoking commercials. Well, you get a, tra- yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a device for a tra- people who have had like okay. tracheotomies or whatever that had throat yeah. cancer. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, that's a real tool. Yeah. Um, but the fact that 
what, what's crazy is it's just an interesting little bit of like subtle storytelling where this they just don't take the guy to the rotation. <laughs> yeah, right? he can't communicate anymore. Sorry, he certainly can't drive body. anymore. But yeah. yeah, I mean they only Go got five it, cops in this place, and one of them is a mechanic. That's I think stealing components from other cars to build Mad Max, a badass V8, the last of the V8s. But I'll tell you what, Joey, I we have hard days here at Kind of Funny, right? And we like to sure. go home. You know, some people like to go home, they work out. Some people like to go home, they read a nice book. When Mad Max goes home, he likes to have his wife play him a nice, sexy saxophone solo. <laughs> what a vibe. I laughed so <laughs> hard. It. <laughs> what do they think? What was he thinking on that one? The I last just thing. don't know, man. The last thing I expected, A, was a saxophone moment in the movie. <sighs> You got it. The second last thing I expected is to pan over to her playing the saxophone. <laughs> I laughed <laughs> so hard. Man, great. what a great thing. Uh, Max, of course, sees the news, news about himself uh, stopping the Night Rider on the nightly news. Uh, next morning, Jess is ma- Jesse, uh, which I think is his wife, is mad that Max has to go to work. She wants him to quit. Meanwhile, their son just plays with a revolver in the living room. Catch that? Cash. Oh, yeah. This is a cash revolver. I'm assuming it's a toy, we hope. Uh, little Jesse. So oh, we have a moment where she signs to him. I'm not quite sure why she knows sign language. Potentially. Weird, right? It's a couple times. Like in the they movie. have a, like the she does it to him, and later he does it to her, and it's like, why? I thought in my brain when I saw this, I was like, oh, it's because their son is deaf. No, no, no. She just signs to him for no yeah. reason. I don't know why. And then of course he echoes that later. I'm crazy about you. Uh, What's up with the mask? What's that? What's up with the mask? I have no He's like holding the mask. Oh, she at one point would try to scare him with the mask yeah, on or whatever. Like and he was, table yeah, something. it was like a sexy thing after the saxophone solo. Yeah. You know, it again, was it a sexy thing? Well, I mean, dude, that's like, what? if I had a dollar for every time I've come home after a hard day uh-huh. and Danielle's just playing that sultry baritone saxophone for me uh-huh. and we get out the Halloween masks yeah. and the, the pumpkin, you know, uh-huh. with the candy in it from last Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> God, like, it's a weird vibe. I don't know the Halloween mask. Post apocalyptic. There's not very many ways to like spice things. Up, yeah, you know? yeah. I guess uh, you're right. Uh, Max heads into work where Goose and Barry, the mechanic, are show him show him the new interceptor with quote the last of the V8s. In Dude, it. what the fuck? This was awesome. Know. Like it's just so damn cool. I'm a sucker for for power up moments, and I'm a sucker <sighs> for vehicles. You know what I mean? This has both in one. Good for you. Mad Max, good for you. We meet Max's boss, Fifi, yep. who just likes going around shirtless with scarves. Kind of weird. V- very weird. Very weird. Very weird. But again, Him kind of like, it was very, uh, I don't even know. I, don't, I can't even place the reference I'm trying to make. But him just kind of sneaking around in the, in the garage area. Like, what is your purpose? <laughs> like, what is your deal? He, they are, uh, they're surreptitiously trying to keep Mad Max happy because he's their poster boy and hopefully, you know, will not quit. Yada, yada, yada. Well, again, what I love about this, though, is that Fifi's weird. And what he's doing is inappropriately odd. And they're all odd. They're all, if you really start to break it down, they're all just like one or two days away from being the biking gang, right? They're just weird and inappropriate. And it's all just collapsing. There's no point in having protocol or boundaries anymore. That's my take on it. Another take is just they just were like, do whatever you want to do. We're not paying you that much. And, and that I, was the character that he brought to the stage. That's yeah. I imagine the people that are willing to put their lives on the line to keep law and order in some semblance happening in these times are going to be a little, a little insane. weird. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be a little off. And they, they nail it. Absolutely. I love that you've seen it, you've heard it, and you're still asking questions. <laughs> of course, uh, his boss tells him, hey, Ward on the street is the Night Rider had friends, and they're coming for you. And Max just shrugs it off and says, I'll add it to my threat list. The next day, like clockwork, the biker gang rolls in, and I... Am a sucker for these like Kawasaki's that they have. Oh, so these cool, like dude. badass 1970s like uh, Japanese import city bikes they have with the bomber cockpit windshields so cool. are so sick. And they have a dog with them. I mean, <laughs> why do they got that dog? They also know. park in perfect, it's so a perfect fun. line, and then get it's off so and cool. start doing some weird ass shit. Oh yeah, it's dancing weird. with each other, fucking with everyone. Obviously, they start rousing the the, the local public. Uh, they go to collect. Uh, uh, Night Night Rider's coffin, or what's left of him? It's like a little tiny baby coffin. Because our friend not... came in on a train, no bodies, just a coffin. There's some <laughs> banger lines in this shit, dude. <laughs> it's amazing. And uh, I'm not quite sure what like half of them mean. <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> of course, the uh, the rail guy that works there is terrified of these people. Uh, I think Johnny Boyer. Someone else wants to kill him, and he's like, no. And he goes over to him, and he's like, grabs him, and he's like, 
uh, he says the, <laughs> uh, uh, the night rider's name, and he says, "Remember him when you look at the night sky." And again, I challenge you: we see the night sky one time in this movie. That's true. <laughs> so that is true. I digress. The rest of the biker, uh, bikers ry- uh, rouse the local uh, gang people, going as far as like to drag one of them behind the bike. Yeah. So look, things ratchet up real quick here because we get the whole the push me, shove you. Oh yeah, says who? And I'm like, what the fuck are we watching? I am uncomfortable. Yeah. And then they ratchet up immediately by dragging that guy oh, from the back of the off. motorcycle, and I was like, whoa, this movie is hella violent. Like. I don't know why I didn't expect that, and I know I, we just saw the guy's eyes bulge and all this. This was a level of discomfort that I haven't felt watching a movie in quite a while, and it would just be the first of many times I felt it. Oh, that's oh, so yeah. interesting. I think because we don't see any of like the gore up close, the violence like doesn't really hit me as much as being violence, and I think that's just desensitized in the yeah, Potentially. Uh, this was a scene that I for, had forgotten about. I, don't, I think I've only seen this movie like once or twice in the past. Uh, but the fact that the, there's the couple in the Chevy that take off and then they immediately hunt them down, dude, violently rip them out and have their way with both of them is crazy. It, I mean, it's yeah, very, that's very, very, very. What I was alluding to, tough. I'm saying like this is just yes. the beginning of that. But yes. like yeah. that being this, the lead in scene to these teens being chased down was like, fuck, man, this is actually really scary and like messed up. Yes. Real twi- twisted metal vibes. Oh, yeah. Mm. You know? I mean, he's definitely. Yeah, Not this is sure. definitely rated R. He's definitely going for. He does not want you to think that these bikers have a decent side to them. They yeah. are all that has collapsed in society. Uh, of course, Max and Goose get the call about the bikers while riding a ticket for a motorcyclist and his uh, girlfriend, who is in the oddest side card you've ever seen in your entire <laughs> life. Yes. But again, going back to the style. That. I love that. Love the hot rod. The, the kids are in the Chevy. Love all the. Love that everything's sort of like hyper stylized mm-hmm. like an anime where it's like all right should they be in motorcycles or should they be in badass motorcycles yeah You're like, all right, well. and i love that like the bad guy gang like they're such identifiable like goons where like they they have the star screams they have the sound waves like they have their like uh the, the, there's that one guy with the sick ass helmet that no one else has you know so cool. i just think they did a really good job of like making it clearly toe cutter is like the new big bad guy because knight rider's gone and then he also has his henchmen that all have their identifiable things Yeah, they're about not him. like interchangeable generic. Yeah. Uh, Goose is the first person on scene, and he spots uh, the Chevy, and he sees the, the, the man from the Chevy uh, naked, bleeding from the waist down, and running for his life. Uh, legitimately, Terrifying. I think one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen on camera. Like, I did not expect that, and it was just such a, like, jump of shit of like, oh, wow, this is, again, scary as hell. Yeah, it's hyper-violent. Uh the woman, of course, is there, but she is uh, Johnny Boy. I think is is with him, but maybe he's whacked out of his mind on something. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure why he's still there, but I think he was either drunk or something was going on, or maybe he just didn't want. You get the sense that Johnny Boy is like, I don't really want to be a part of this, and I'm getting dragged along. So maybe he stayed back, um, uh, but he stayed back, and he to supervise or at least is watching uh, the young girl who is now chained to the car. Uh, they come, they they uh, get her, and then they uh, scoop up Johnny Boy and throw him into the the interceptor. Uh, meanwhile, Toe Cutter orders Bubba to go back for him. And he's like, I don't want to. That guy's there. I don't got it. He's not one of us. And he's like, go back for him anyway. I don't care. It's an order. One line that I want to write down that I that I have from uh, Toe Cutter is when he goes to the town, he's talking to, I forget who it was. I think it was Johnny Boy. Uh, and he says, like, like, will you do what, what I want? And he says, anything you say. And he goes, anything I say. What a wonderful philosophy to have. And then he hisses at him. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of hissing. Awesome. He does a lot of hissing in this. <laughs> There's a lot of hissing. <laughs> at least dude. three hissings <laughs> happening. We head back to the Hall of Justice. Uh, they tell Max and Goose that no one showed up to press charges, so the biker is just free to go. And Goose understandably loses his shit and starts beating the hell out of uh, Johnny Boy. They pull him off. Johnny Boy goes off with Bubba. We remember the Knight Rider. And we know who you are, Bronze. Is what they scream mm-hmm. back at them, uh, referring to the police officers. Goose is like, you know what, man? That guy just threatened my life. Do you know what I want to do? I'm going to party at the local cabaret and listen to this lady (laughs) sing a song that's so weird and so off-putting that, of course, they have to have sex afterward. Of course. Why not? That is exactly what happens while they're out having sex, uh, or while he's uh, in the club, rather, so when he's tinkering with his bike, it does not go well. Uh, He... The next day he wakes up early, he just starts flying, man. Just starts ripping it down the highway. And is, What else uh, is there to do in the apocalypse, you know? That and eat another human being <clears throat> would be my two just main focuses. Huh. Yeah, are we like on the same I think so. level with We're greens now? Fo- well, this is gray. Oh, I'm going to green thing. 
Nice. Maybe it's you and Greg that are matching today. Potentially. I like Wait, to eat so snacks. So in the apocalypse, no rules, law, just gone. You, the first thing you would want to do is eat another human being. Not the first thing I'd want to do, but I ha you have to imagine. Be like on your bucket list. That's where I, I, I evolve to very quickly, right? We're not, the canned goods probably go in the first six months. And then you're just out there looking at Tim, just licking your lips like, mm, <laughs> with some pork chops he's got there, you know? Would you, mm, okay. Are you just waiting for Tim to die to like take a little? Oh, nibble? I'm not killing anyone. Okay, but I'm also not I didn't telling know where your them. Line was. I'm also not telling Greg where the traps are. If he figures them out, good on him. If he yeah. gets stuck in that Survival crazy trap fitness. where you fall down and it stabs him, oh, then I just go in for. In yeah, yeah, yeah. I just go in for a little ham hock there. Hmm. A little bit of a ham hock. If you're picking between Tim and Greg, do you have like a mm. preference? Probably Greg. I think I feel like there's more meat on that bone. He's slightly taller than Tim. Plus, he's like got he that dad fight strength. Back harder, though. Not if he's spiked to death. <laughs> That's why the traps are there. Yeah. Don't worry about it, Tim. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, he goes flying, but he's not dead. He's just dazed and ends up calling Mitch, who gives him a ride back, even though Mitch then has to ride his bike back, which is weird. They're like, whose car is this? Is this Mitch's car? Yeah. <laughs> Why would Mitch just let you drive the car, of course, just to, prove, uh, to move the story along? Uh, uh, that he keeps going. At this point, I'm like, I thought they would have assaulted him there, but no, they just wait for him to come back on the other road and throw a rotor through his windshield. He flips over. And this is where we get the pivotal moment for Johnny Boy. Are you going to be one of us or not? And he even says, uh, this, this is a threshold moment, Johnny. Step through. Because he wants him to light Goose on fire. And Johnny, I guess, doesn't. But he does because he drops the match. He doesn't want to do it. So he drops yeah. the match. And that ends up lighting the hay. Which then ends up lighting the fuel. Which then ends up burning which is the, Goose. I think the, you don't really have a choice even if you think you're not making the choice you are. Right. But <laughs> what I love not love, but what I find very fascinating about this as sort of a character moment for the bad guy is the bad guy is psychologically abusing one of his own to make him into the rest of the gang, yeah. which is fucked up. It's so fucked up. And Johnny man. Boy is like, if you could see, you could actually view him all the way as a piece of shit as a bit of a sympathetic character because he doesn't want to be of this. He's like, even when he, in this place, I don't want to do this. This is not what I want. I just wanted to scare him. I don't want to like... I don't want to burn man alive. Like this is taking it too far. And Toe Cutter's like, no, you're in for a penny, in for a pound. Similar to how I would be if I had Greg just lying out there on the pit. I take well, all the pounds. Maybe my least favorite thing about this movie was the the scene of him throwing the thing through the car. He fucking oh, chucked that yeah. thing. It was just like, what are we doing here, guys? Yep. That looked bad. You ever picked up a car rotor before? They're no. Heavy. Well, I know. How do like you launch that timing. thing like that? Just, the timing, <laughs> everything about it was like, what is going on? This you is have, some superhero shit. You have to imagine there was some meth involved. That always helps, I guess. <laughs> I guess. It makes <laughs> you strong. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this something. is brutal. Goose being lit on fire was just like, oh, Ugh. my guy. And we see way too much of it. And then the, the cut to the hospital stuff was like, dang, man. Yeah. Uh, of course, we cut over. Uh, Max goes to the hospital where he finds Goose in intensive care and is not looking good. He does not do well with this. Later that night, Max has a nightmare. Uh, we have a great shot where he kind of he kind of pulls up. You get the eye light and the camera dollies mm -hmm. in. Very cool. Very good cinematography for the era. He, of course, then immediately heads to the office and gives his papers. He's like, I'm through. I looked at this Halloween mask for my wife, and I realized this was going to be the final straw. Where they're going to kill us. And then Fifi's like, look, just go on vacation for a few weeks. And if you, if you change your mind, change your mind. If not... But just recognize the fact that I am talking to you this entire time shirtless with just a scarf on. Yeah. <laughs> and leather pants. Mm -hmm. And it is a vibe. Oh, yeah. It's you have hot to in Australia, you know? To what is the sweat factor in all this leather? Oh. Hi. Are they talcum powder in this? Okay. Ugh, no. This is, has nothing to do with the movie. But you guys see the video yesterday of Lenny Kravitz at yes. the gym <laughs> in a doing mesh shirt and leather pants? Mesh shirt, leather pants, doing the worst like sit up style bench press that I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, well, someone's got to stop this guy. You can't yeah. be doing that shit. No one can stop Lenny. Fitness. Yeah, but it's just crazy that he was doing it in leather pants. I'm like, that's got to be so wet. Those leather pants Ooh. would be stinky, pinky when yeah. he's done. Gross. You can't get that smell out of leather, Tim. I don't can care you, how much steam I don't you. Even you wash leather. You got to like. I don't you care how much it. steam you use. <laughs> Uh, of course, yeah. Look at this. This is insane. He's out of his mind. That is so bad <laughs> for you. What is he doing? I cannot. I cannot say this enough. I don't think anyone would recommend this particular workout. And I love that his dude's just wearing sunglasses over there in normal, like, workman gear. Just what is happening? I don't like it. Maybe you got But you could throw Lenny Kravitz in that outfit in this movie. Fit right in. Oh, I just tell you would. Yeah. Lenny That's Kravitz really cornered true. the market on post apocalyptic Australian indies. They say people don't believe in heroes anymore. Well, damn them. You and me, Max. We're going to give them back their heroes. We're going to give them back their heroes. How could you not love this fucking film? Okay. <laughs> Max calls him out. He's like, uh, you really think I was going to go for that bullshit? 
He's like, I'm, right. he's like, give me a reason to stay. And he goes, or he's like, give me a reason why you're leaving. He goes, I'm scared. It's that rat circus out there, and I'm beginning to enjoy it. Any longer out there on the road, and I'm going to be one of them. A terminal crazy. Come on. This is good stuff. Uh, you'll be back. You're hooked, Max, and you know it. Max takes his family on a vacation over Aunt May's house, and they get a dog from a Scottish guy. Max tells a touching story about being with his father and not really knowing how to express his love, and he doesn't want to make that mistake with Jess, and she gets it, and she smooches him. The family wagon gets a flat, so Max stops off at the junkyard to fix it. Jess decides, hey, we're far enough away from the biker, so I'm going to take my baby and grab some ice cream for herself and their son, Sprog. This is another thing that is, like, kind of confusing of, like, Society has degraded to the point where we don't have enough people that want to be cops to have law and order. Mm-hmm. But somehow we still have ice cream shops. Ice cream shop. There's <laughs> ice cream shops, and we this woman, this woman with this kid, married to Mad Max. All right, dealing with all things that she knows he has to go through. She's like, I'm gonna go to the secluded private beach. Yeah, that other people can get to. Yep. What the fuck are you thinking? Not good. Of course, our right. choices. 100%. It's hard to like take seriously watching this movie. Of like, yeah. what are you doing right well, now? Well, to their credit. They've been driving for hours, so they're supposed to be hundreds of miles at this point away from where the bikers were. True. They're hours away from the bikers they know are actively after them. Right. Instead of but. just the opportunistic, <laughs> generic <laughs> but But that's the point, right, is that no matter what Max does, no matter where he goes, he cannot escape this. And so Max. as the viewer, the you're supposed Wick. to sort of feel like, oh, they're safe for now. And then, no, she, even in this small town, this tiny little beach town has one little sad ice cream shop. The bikers are there. The danger is there. The threat is there. Of course, she immediately finds the bikers. They mess with her. She smashes a toe cutter with some ice cream and takes off. Tells Max, get in the damn car. We got to go. Of course, the junkyard guy rats him out. He's like, oh, that guy's staying up the road or whatever. You can find him pretty easily there. That guy's going to get his come up soon. Uh, Later that day, they pull over and they find, uh, oh, there's a great moment where the guy's like, I think it was Cardellini or whatever his name is, throws a chain at it. And they kind of just pull him down the road for a bit. And then he rolls off. Turns out his hand came off. Yeah, dude. They find the hand. Oh. They report it to the local police, and he's like, hey, man, no one's come to claim this hand, so you're probably fine. We'll just give you it. You're going to be okay. It's like, we're just going to keep this in the refrigerated lost yeah. and found. Uh, so they head out to the farmhouse where Aunt May lives. Max gets uh, stuck fixing a timing belt, and Jess is like, you know what? I didn't really learn my first lesson by going too far away from you, so I'm just going to go to the beach with the dog. And, of course, she gets an eerie feeling after coming out of the water. Heads up. The dog goes off. And then uh, she starts feeling that someone's following her. She sees this weird, um, the man baby that's in the woods that may wander about. If I'm going to encounter something after this traumatic experience that might make me further traumatized, no disrespect to the man baby, give me a little more description on what's going on here, May. Right? Yeah. Don't call it a baby that don't worry about it. I'm like, this is a seven foot lo- tall man. You know, scary. Could a lot be scary going on here. Like when we, when she's at the beach, uh, she does get the warning from Matt May of just like, hey, don't worry about him. He's just a, just a baby or whatever exactly uh, she says. Then when we get down there, the dog runs off. Immediately, I'm like, oh, this is, this is bad. Dog's no. Bad sign. We already, as audience, we know this is going to be bad. This dog knows something. They have the intuition, Joey. Mm-hmm. I was worried about the, the dog. I was know, very worried about the dog. Rightfully so. You know? And then we get the chase scene in the forest where she's all running through and we start hearing like all the different animal calls and you realize that's not the dog. These are the people. The mm-hmm. voices of the people. They're making weird ass meows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cat calls and yeah. a bunch of shit. I don't like. And then there's this baby character that just didn't need to be in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, it did not need to be in the movie. It just didn't need to be in the movie. Serves no purpose to further the plot along or any character it just progression. just was no. kind of weird. <laughs> like, just it was a low like key. a jump scare for her, and that yeah. was kind of it. Which we didn't need. No. You know? No. And then the shot later, like, seconds later, of her <laughs> running out with this guy, like, Jason there, but, like, he's not the problem. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it was just fucking weird, man. It was weird. Of course, Max screams back to, uh, to May uh, to, to call... Uh, the dark one, because they got some hoon trouble, which is one of those where I'm like, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> I have to imagine some of it is slightly fucked up, but I, and maybe uh-huh. a pejorative to some degree, but I am not sure, and I'm not going to look it up. Uh, he heads off into the woods uh, with a double barrel, which I think oh, is yeah. the same double barrel he will go on to use uh, for the remainder of the movie. Uh, May takes solace in the house and then springs to life because she realized nobody's watching Sprog. Uh, and the last time we it saw him, like, he was playing with a revolver. <laughs> seems like there was a lot of time between her realizing that nobody was watching the baby and like I yeah. how did how did nobody remember about this poor child? You cool. you run off and you leave your baby like it's just yeah it's well, a weird call. Max was watching the kid. 
when yeah. he was when he was working yeah, on the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. But and I so like Max not- ran off thinking, "Oh, someone will take care of the kid." She ran to the house. Who's someone though? Well, May or, or maybe this the the giant man baby will take care of the kid. Maybe he's good <laughs> with babies. Yeah, he has this sort of you know the kindred yeah. spirit. Uh, uh, May comes out. Let's see. Uh, she runs in fi- out to find Sprog. Sprog, of course, is knee deep in biker shit. Uh, Toe Cutter introduces her to Kundalini, who wants his hand back. May awesome. comes out with another double barrel shotgun. Apparently, these are the only weapons left. Uh, and, and, uh, and and forces them into the barn while she Jesse. business with that gun, too. Her. Oh, I hate guns. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Uh, I do want to get a point out to the, the, the lone stuntman who is just teeter tottering on the barn door like Jesus. About yeah. It. yeah. That dude was just standing on the door as it was like swinging oh. back and forth. That was insane. A cool Wild. stunt. Uh, she, they forced them into the barn. While Jess and Sprague head out in the family wagon, of course, unfortunately, they do not know, uh, did not see that someone sh- shoved a giant metal shard through the radiator, thus overheating the car. Um, it should be noted that May seems to have one of those orthotic braces, like Forrest, Forrest Gump. I took that mm-hmm. note for absolutely mm-hmm. no reason. Mm-hmm. The car overheats, of <laughs> no, course. No, I did like that, though. I mean, it, she's been through shit. Yeah. You know? Well, it also it also creates a sense of tension when she's trying to run after them yep. to, mm-hmm. to warn them and she can't get to them. Uh, they start running. Of course, the car stops dead in the tracks, seeing no other option. Jesse runs down the road with Sprog in tow, uh, but the bikers, uh, despite the fact that May is there, uh, gets out, tries to take one last shot with the double barrel, misses. The bikers go right past her, and what do they do? They unfortunately run over Jesse and Sprog. What the fuck? And you see the Joey, little- what do you wild. think about this? I was, first, I was confused. Interesting that you run down the road. Uh, with all the motorcycles chasing you and not like trying to cut into like a field or something like mm-hmm. that. I thought that was an interesting move. But I was like, there's no way they're going to run over Jesse and this baby. I was like, they didn't run over the baby last time early in the movie. There's no way they do it the second time. Boy, was I wrong about that. I, it's, of course, I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone in this. It's one of those things where as it's all set up, you joke. I, I leaned over to G. I was like, imagine they just fucking ran over this baby, <laughs> this, this woman right now. Like, not thinking they were actually going to do it. And then they did it. And it was like, a, oh, my God, they did it. Oh, yeah. I, wow. Wow. Shocking. That was fucking crazy. And the way they show it, very unclear. Because <laughs> oh, it's 100%. another one of those editing things where I'm like, ah, we've gotten better about this. Um, but just seeing the, like, little kid's shoe. Totally. Uh, it was like, oh, man. That's pretty much all you need to see. Yeah, it yeah. is. And it, it is. It's one of those things like the old Hitchcockian concept that, like, your brain Fills, fills in something in the, that's always yeah. scarier than whatever mm-hmm. you can show. What a terrifying and traumatic thing to to have happen to two characters you've spent an hour and 15 minutes with. It's shocking, it's horrifying, and it's the step that we need to push Matt to push Max from being Max Rod Rock Tanskowski or whatever his name is to Matt Max, right? Yeah, man. Matt, of course, uh, being used in the context of this movie of he's not angry, he's insane. Oh, yeah. He's gone off his mm-hmm. rocker. Uh, so Max, of course, stares out into the distance like a zombie once he finds out that his son is DOA. And Jess, not dead, just missing an arm and in, in critical condition. But he lists like all of the different things. That yeah, he's, uh, it sounds like uh, the end of one of those like like a commercial for a drug where they're like a side effects may include, yep. and they just go down the list, and it's always explosive diarrhea. I don't know why every drug makes that happen every time. The next is day, she's salvageable. Yes, they say, and then they get her to the the hospital. We lost the kid. Oh my God! DOA, right? Is yeah, DOA. DOA. Fuck. Whoa. Max stares out into the distance like a zombie. The next day, he suits up, back up in all black leather, and gets in the last of the V8 interceptors. Out we go. Should be noted also that uh, he has a sawed-off double barrel shotgun strapped to his fucking hip for the rest of this movie. No holsters in the rest of the movie. No guns in the rest of the movie. He found a holster that could <laughs> could fit a double barrel <laughs> shotgun. Good. And it's sick. Max first stop is to the junkyard to interrogate the mechanic about the gang's whereabouts once he gets that information out of them. They're down on the beach robbing a fuel truck in transit. So pay, pay a little attention to this particular scene of a, a, a group of gang trying to rob a, a fuel truck in transit. Very, very cool. Mm-hmm. Love it, actually. Love the little setup of Tease of my Oh, this is what I thought Mad Max was going to be a 100%. bit more. But I just love the idea of fuel being so valuable. They love their vehicles. They love their cars in this universe. So damn cool. But also, this scene, very reminiscent of another scene. Fast, Fast and four, Furious. Yeah. The opening scene. Mm-hmm. Love it. Great scene. Big fan. Where's Vin Diesel? Again, it turns Canadian, out. Though. Yet. Yet. One day, I hope. Did you know that Vin Diesel also grew up in Australia and no, was a no, huge fan of men? Not. No, he did not. 
He probably grew up. Mark Sinclair is not from Mark Australia. Sinclair. Mark Sinclair. Is that his real name? I'm 99% sure. That's amazing. Vin Diesel. He went. He really went for that stage name, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be John Thunder and Lightning when I when I start <laughs> making movies like Fast and Furious. Uh, Johnny Boy. Let's see where are we at. Oh, I lost my. Time. Max is there waiting for them. Of course, he runs them all off the road in a magnificent fashion. Yep. Just dispatches these guys without prejudice. Uh, shout out to the practical effects. They just had to do these stunts. There's just, just dudes crazy. riding motorcycles into the air and off the road and smack. Yep. You got to imagine there's some broken legs and snapped arms in this bad boy. Max, Max, of course, finally catches up to Johnny Boy, who is seemingly, let's see, Diesel Mark was Sinclair. born Mark Sinclair in Alameda County, California. Look at that. Represent. That's like, look at that. Right here. 20 minutes from us. He's a Bay Area boy. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so is the uh, wrong. That's crazy. Hey, so is Ali Wong. Of course. No, no real connection uh-huh. there. Zendaya, too. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I did not know that. Johnny well, Boy, of course, uh, is faking it. He's Gia's sitting... dad was Zendaya's high school principal. Shut up. Yeah. Well, Crazy she is shit. cool then. She is now. As cool as possible. Didn't go to school for that long, but for the time she was well. there. They're pretty much like, she has the talent, because it was a school of the arts. A uh, school of the arts. So they, they gave Open her the, school of the arts. what do they call it in wrestling when you get the, the push? Call up? No, yeah. That's baseball. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what cool. happened. That's great. Maybe we should go back to school. <laughs> Johnny Boy runs back and telephones uh, the toe cutter and Bubba Zanetti. So they set up a little bit of a sting or an ambush. Uh, Johnny Boy is sitting there lying dead on the side of the road. He ain't no fool, though. Mad Max approaches with double barrel out. Too bad. Toe cutter is a crack shot with that revolver that he's got. Isn't like guns. Sure, buddy. We already saw him, by the way. Should be noticed. It's foreshadowed. We saw him shooting a dummy from like really far away. Mm -hmm. This just takes Max's knee out. This was brutal. Blasted in the knee, and then his hand gets ran over by a motorcycle. And it's like, oh, poor Maxi boy. Poor Maxi boy. Of course, when I I love this moment too, where Bubba's like, Toe Cutter's like, what are you waiting for? Go get him. And Bubba's like, I know what I'm doing here. And turns around at the right time. And heads back to him. What does he get for his trouble? Just blasted in the chest. Mm. Just taken off his bike. Uh, Wild. Toe cutter, not stupid. He's like, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to bang <laughs> out on this one. He heads back. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, toe cutter heads off down the road. Johnny Boy, of course, does the same. Max drags his now lifeless left leg to the car while a vulture helps itself to Bubba's open chest. Such, I'm so happy this <laughs> so vulture cool. was here. Like that, It just added so much to yeah. what's going on. It's it's ridiculous, and obviously like a vulture wouldn't be circling that until they actually smell blood later, but I love the visual. I love that mm-hmm. it's like, the second you die, this thing's waiting to eat you in this yeah. landscape. It's cool. Uh, Max wastes no time. He gets his interceptor uh, and runs Bubba down. Just catches up to him fast. No pomp and circumstance, no back and forth, no second where it's like, oh, maybe Bubba's going to win this. No. Bubba's nope. just like, shit, this guy's coming for me. I'm in a bike. And he just smashes his ass insane into the grill of an 18-wheeler. We get, I think, the exact same shot of the eyes that they just reused. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. another one, who knows? But he is dead. And then Max just drives through the night, almost passes out. And you have to imagine somewhere in Australia on the cutting room floor is him dreaming about the saxophone. Of course. Mm. One more time by morning, and then he goes under the truck wheels too. Oh, the bike, yeah, yeah, and uh, his body, yeah, it's terrifying. Like it's, it's very violent death. Yeah, no, thank you. By morning, he finds Johnny's bike on the side of the road. We see a car has run off, and he finds Johnny uh, uh, over by the dead body of the person who was uh, driving the truck, trying to steal his boots. They were cool boots. To be fair. They were cool boots. Uh, Max sees the fuel line leaking and hands Johnny a pair of handcuffs and says one simple word ankle then when johnny uh puts the handcuff on his ankle max grabs the other end and drags his ass over to the chassis of the car handcuffing him to that and he sets up a little lighter sets up a little uh, i guess a little saw like trap for johnny grabs a hacksaw out of the tool chest from the from the trucker and says uh this is that's corrugated steel or whatever it is or I'm, i don't know whether it, uh it's gonna take you 10 minutes to cut through that if you're lucky it'll take you five minutes to cut through your ankle Drops the hacksaw next to him and takes off back up the hill. As Johnny screams at him, you're mad. Which is where he gets the nickname Mad Max from. And as he drives off, oh, you got to figure Johnny had 30 seconds. That car just explodes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right behind him. And the last thing we, say, we see as Max drives down the road is that cold, empty stare and just a post-apocalyptic dark road ahead of him. I, that is it. I loved so much of this movie. This end brought it together for me where I was like, oh, this was phenomenal this was something fucking special like the buildup of him being like if i'm out here too long i'm gonna go too far yeah and then to see him in this moment go too far but this is who he is there's no going back anymore yeah like he lost everything he had like 
civilization has is declining, but he no longer has his girl and his kid. And it's like, what it's are the we? John Wick thing. I, it's what are we gonna do here? Never and the down. shot of him driving and the way, like you're talking about the camera frame of his face was so good. But I love how exactly how long they sat on it before the explosion happens. Like, it was just like, this is good stuff, it's man. Cool. Yeah. I also liked how Johnny Boy, as he's like screaming and stuff like that, is like, I just wanted new shoes. I just wanted new shoes. And I feel like that adds to the like. You can tell that he's not all the way there because he's not connecting the fact that, like, that's not Max doesn't give a fuck that he's trying to steal his dude's boots. Yeah, yeah. totally. All the totally. Other stuff. Yeah. All the other shit. Yeah. And uh, also the fact that, let's be honest, he drove that guy off the road to kill the guy to yeah. get his boots, but Johnny's just gone and he's, yeah. been, he's been, he's gone because of Toe Cutter because Toe Cutter pushed him too far. And that's it. We're all just the same now, driving down an empty road. Dun, dun, dun. And that is Mad Max. It is. So obviously we don't need to rank it because Mad Max is currently number one. Will it stay number one? We'll have to wait and see. And then for um, the Ragu Bagu, um, I'm going to put Toe Cutter and the Knight Rider gang. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll, we'll do that. and the Knight Riders. Um, and I'm really interested in where we go from here, everybody. Like I said, next week we will return with the Road Warrior, a.k.a. Mad Max 2. And I'm very excited for that. Uh, I'm also very excited because I, I know you've liked Mad Max. I thought you liked this. So the fact that Road Warrior is the one you like. Road, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Road Warrior is bonkers, man. Awesome. So you're going to enjoy this one. Great, 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 great. Okay, well, hey, we're going to do that, and we're going to do it together, everyone. It's going to be fun. But until then, have a great day. <laughs>